using the generalized Cauchy integral formula, we were able to go from this to what's written at the bottom of your screen. Just in case you're not convinced, just look at the similarity between what's here and what's here. And if you look closely, you have our Taylor series. So that's how we derive the Taylor series expansion using the Cauchy integral formula. You might be thinking that's much ado about nothing. We already derived it very quickly in the past. But I think we need to do what I've just done in order to get at the Lorentz series properly, which we do now. We must be able to distinguish between Taylor and Lorentz series. It's important to note that small f of z is, is analytic in the region of radius r from the pole z equals z0. f of z, small f of z, does not in fact have singularities, for example, it divided by 0. But small f of z may have zeros, which might be, for example, zero over something which is non-zero. At a zero, of course, the derivatives don't exist. Now, I present something here which I don't want to get bogged down in. Think about taking the nth order derivative. Of course, if the nth order derivative is zero, then we know all previous derivatives are zero. This means that a sub n is non-zero, but all the ones up to that are. Therefore, our Taylor series will become what's written at the bottom of your screen. I don't really want to get bogged down into this. This is just a small piece of mathematics which we can accept and use later on. So, we would like to extend the concept of Taylor series to complex functions which are not necessarily analytic around the pole. Remember, the Taylor series went right the whole way down to the pole. It worked. We seek a power series expansion for small f of z about the poles z sub n. We refer to such power series as the Lorentz series, and they're useful where the singularities are known. Let's look at the similarity between a Taylor and Lorentz series. For the Taylor series expansion, we are able to ex we are able to expand in powers of n going from zero to infinity. With the Lorentz series, we actually extend that to negative infinity, around the point z is equal to z0. Now, I, yeah, like the, the fact that we have a pole here in the Taylor series is something we don't need to get bogged down in yet. The point is that it's analytic, the function is analytic at a, at a radius in the neighborhood of, the, uh, of any particular point, z0. But with the Lorentz series, the z, it might not be analytic. Note, of course, with the Lorentz series, half of it, of course, is the Taylor series, and the rest is new. We know that for analytic functions, we get the positive a sub n's. This means for our Lorentz series, an analytic function has a sub n equal to zero for all n less than zero. In other words, the Lorentz series is the generalized version of the Taylor series, such that when your function is analytic, all the a sub n's less than zero go to zero. We can express the coefficients as a sub n going from negative to positive infinity, or using a sub n for n greater than zero and b sub n for n less than zero, as I've done here. Two different ways of writing it, using a single a sub n and extending from negative to positive infinity, or using b sub n which you use is entirely up to you. Why is this useful, you might be wondering. Don't worry, it's something we're going to address very shortly. How do Lorentz series work? Well, Taylor series are used for functions which are analytic in a circular region surrounding the singularity. Lorentz series are for functions that are analytic in an annular region between two concentric circles. Oh, that's a bit, it's a bit hairy. So look, just look at our domain. Our domain is in blue, it's D. We have our pole Z0. We also have two paths, C2 in pink and C1 in green. That makes an annular, annular region. The annular region is here. Kind of like a donut. So the point is, 
that with the Taylor series we could bring the path right the whole way down to here and we would have had our derivatives exist the whole way, th the whole way through and because the function is analytic at z0. However, for the Taylor, excuse me, for the Lorentz series, it's not analytic at z0. So instead what we do is we consider an inner contour and an outer contour and we look at the behavior between them. We let z be any point in the annulus between c1 and c2. Note that c1 is the inner contour. And we invoke the Cauchy integral formula twice and follow a similar procedure to that used for the Taylor series derivation. With the Taylor series derivation we only had one contour and we let that shrink down to z0. Now we're going to have two contours and we're going to look at the difference between them because that's what's going to give us this annular region in here. So we have f of z, not f of z0, just like we did with the Taylor series. Now we're going to subtract from the integral involving the contour 2, the integral involving contour 1. Note by the way, I've called this integral 1, this integral 2, so just be careful of the indices, even though I'm sure it's not, it's something you're not going to get bogged down in. But integral 1 has been solved previously. That's simply a Taylor series expansion. We know the answer. We know the coefficients. They're given by the generalized Cauchy integral formula written at the bottom of your screen. We apply the principle of deformation of path and let C2 go to C, which we can do because of the singular because the singularity at Z0 does not appear in C. Therefore, we have an uh, equation for A sub n in the Lorentz series. What does this really mean? Well, if we look at the contour C2 on the outside in pink, and we look at the contour in green on the inside. While these are two contours we're using in order to get at the real contour, which is the black one in C. So what we're doing is we evaluated the integral involving the contour C2. By deformation of path, we can easily shrink this down and let that become the integral c, or the integral involving the contour c. And that means they're going to be the same thing. We just found that the integral involving the contour c sub 2 is in actual fact a Taylor series expansion. So what we're after finding are the a sub n's for the, uh, the Lorentz series for the contour c. Remember that we had in their Lorentz series we have the a sub n's for the positive, the positive n values and the b sub n's for the negative n values, depending on how you write it. We just found, in actual fact, this particular integral here is our Taylor series. What we have left to evaluate is this one here, which is integral c sub 1, the inner integral that was in green.